I was the horse leader for a boy who was seven years old and diagnosed with autism, and he had never spoke a single word in his life. And during that session, he ended up talking. And he wasn't talking to me or the therapist. He actually started talking to his horse. And I will never forget that day as long as I live. And I, I in that moment, was so curious what happened. How did that work? So fast forward, uh, we just completed another documentary not long ago, and I started volunteering again. And I was just in awe of the horse-human connection. And then at some point, we watched a Facebook post go viral. And it was about the researchers that did some research in collaboration with HeartMath about heart coherence and what it is that really causes these two-way healing effects in partnership with horses. And so at that point, I told Chrisanna, I think it's time to do a film about the miracles, mystery, and the science of healing with horses. So that is the backstory of how Rescued Hearts began. So many of you also work with horses. So yes. I just want to, let me add myself here. I just want to thank you for the work you're doing. Uh, it is truly remarkable to be a witness to humans who dedicate their lives and pour so much blood, sweat, and tears into helping people heal. And the fact that, you know, you're doing this with this work with these majestic animals, whether or not you're in the healing space, I think what we've observed is that healing happens no matter what. Sometimes we're healing, sometimes the beings around us are healing, but um, that's a really cool thing about why we're doing this today. So I just wanted to share quickly, uh, I'm the director, of rescued hearts and it's a funny term because i really feel that dana is mostly the director to be quite honest uh this was her brainchild this this project was really um something that came directly from her heart and in the beginning i was kind of along for the ride sometimes begrudgingly because i don't really like being dirty and the smell of animals and horses and manure <laughs> was not really my jam and yet something started to happen in me and I can tell you, um, you know, I've been I've been creating films for about 20 years now, which is wild, 36 since I was 16. And uh, I just had no idea how much creating this film would change me. So I really quickly wanted to share something I wrote uh, on social media this week that I think kind of sums up this process that I've been in of filming and editing and kind of uncovering um, this magic of this healing connection between us and nature. So what I wrote was, there's something about these large majestic beings who embody full and complete authenticity. And when I'm invited into that space with them, somehow I feel nonverbal permission to do the same. Something I have sought and yearned for instantly feels so easy in the presence of the wild embodied essence of nature itself. And in that space, I finally allow myself to just be. So I wanted to share that because we are nearing the end of a month that is very important to Dana and I, Pride Month. And I think what's so beautiful about this work that we've been doing and, and this journey that we've embarked on, we had no idea. I mean, it'll be about two years that we've been doing this by the time the film is really getting released into the world. And I had no idea that parts of me would heal in the presence of horses that I would um, almost regain permission to allow myself to be. And I think even parts of my heart that I had locked away so long ago, terrified of who I am, um, even those parts of me are like coming to the light in this journey. So I'm so grateful for this experience. And I know so many of you are witnesses to this, maybe every day to this healing power, but this has been very new for me. And uh, so that's why I'm really excited about our time together tonight, because going inside my heart, having the permission, having permission to see myself and love myself, uh, it, what's happening is it's like this, it's like this circle. So it's like, you know, you, you, so many of you know this, but I'll just say it's, what we observed was horses helping humans heal and then humans help horses heal. And it's like this circle. And I think that's even been happening with me as it relates to the filmmaking process. I'm filming and creating something, but then that something is also creating me. And so this me preview and, you know, what you're experiencing so far is like an extension of my heart. And I just wanted to say from my heart to yours, I'm so grateful that we're here. And I'm so grateful to have this time together to go inside our hearts and to develop more tools in how to do that. Okay, Dana.
<laughs> well, thank you for sharing from your heart. That's one of the things I love most about you. And the truth is, I'm really honored to be on this journey with you because you could have very easily said no when I was like, hey, I want to create this film about the healing power of horses, knowing how you haven't really even been around them. You could have very easily told me it felt too dangerous or too challenging. And here we are a year and a half later creating an incredible film. So thank you for saying yes. <laughs> If you have not already seen it, or if you've watched it and you're excited to share it with other people, by all means, please do so. The sneak preview is going to be available from now until Sunday. Um, it ends at 11 p.m. in your local time. So there's still plenty of time to watch or rewatch if you really enjoyed it. So thank you so much for those of you that also helped us spread the word or that reshared our posts on social media. Um, you don't realize that every single thing that you do that creates even one person that is aware of this film is so helpful to us. As independent documentary filmmakers, we literally cannot do this without the support of a, a community and a tribe to help us get it out into the world. So thank you. And speaking of thank yous, um, in order to make our sneak preview accessible to the masses, we did some outreach to find a sponsor who believes in our mission and also one that we would be excited to elevate and share about. So when Joanne reached out, I knew it was totally aligned for us to collaborate with her. Uh, Joanne believes that horses are one of the greatest learning and healing partners that we can be guided by. And in partnership with them, she is committed to helping her clients find their way back to their true selves, healing their spirits and finding their joy. When she unexpectedly lost her son, Jesse, in 2022, Joanne was not able to find the support that she needed during such a time of unimaginable grief. And because she didn't want others to experience that same thing, um, she actually went through training and became a certified grief specialist and has since empowered countless clients and really showing them that hope is attainable. Thank you for believing in this film and giving others access to watch this sneak preview over this week. Um, we, we truly couldn't be more grateful. Yeah, seriously. And while we're doing some shout outs, um, uh, I really quickly wanted to just say, if you've watched the sneak preview, you probably fell in love with Alyssa at the very end as much as we did. Oh my God, I just, I love her heart and her story. And I wanted to kind of, she didn't ask us to do this, but she actually has a business called Willow Paints. And so I just wanted to share about it. The fact that she creates these paintings and it's kind of helping fund her education. And also she has a podcast with her dad and it's so special. It's called Reinforce the Horse. And they actually have had conversations with some of the people that we filmed with. So anyway, quick shout out. And lastly, I wanted to mention so many organizations said yes when Dana asked if we could film with them. And we represented quite a few of them in this sneak preview, but it would have been overwhelming to try to title all of them, especially when it was like a clip here and there. Huge thank you to each and every one of these groups. And I think um, even more broadly, just thank you to each and every one of you that's doing this work. It, you know, there's no way we could have filmed at every place and represented every person. But what we hope we're creating is a, is a picture of something that's happening much bigger on this planet and that it will ripple out love, hope and healing and inspiration in a way that I'm sorry, but I watch some content, not much, on different streaming platforms, and I struggle to find anything worth watching. So we're trying to create more and more uh, content like this that just spreads a lot of love. Yeah, it's funny to see that list. I know that's not an all-inclusive list, and let me tell you why. We filmed over 86 days of content in the last year and a half, which blows my mind. We were in over 30 cities, four countries, and filmed with over 100 people in that time frame. So I have to tell you that I thought there were times Chrisanna was um, going to kill me because I'm like, sorry, we're traveling again and we have to go do this thing. And, you know, as a producer of a film, it's a lot of responsibility. I have so I have as many decisions to make before this film is created. All right. Maybe not as many, but and then Chrisanna has to make all the decisions on the back end. And I gave her hundreds of hours of content to sort through for this edit. 
But additionally, we are going to be able to create short documentaries after Rescued Hearts that can go deeper into some of the stories. And just one example uh, is the grief situation. Honestly, grief became an emerging theme and we filmed with some incredible researchers and, uh, and people who have experienced traumatic grief and their journey in partnership with uh, specifically rescued animals and horses. So that one will be called Broken Hearts. So you can expect to see a like series. I haven't really announced this too much publicly, but there will be a series at some point, but Rescued Hearts will be the full feature film. So we're super excited about that. So you might be wondering, um, what are other ways that you can support the film? First of all, just being here is enough support. Thank you, truly. Um, if there are people out there that still have some, you know, um, income that can be spared and they want to support this independent film, we are still taking donations. We still have money to raise to cross the finish line. So on our website, there's a donate button that can be used. And if you scroll down to the mission section, I don't know if Chrisanna has it up. Oh, you're, I think you're a step ahead. Yeah, there we go. So there's a donate button at the top of our website. And then if you scroll down a little bit, um, you're gonna see our trailer, the inspiration and the mission. So there's a donate button there as well. If you need your donation to be tax deductible, we do have a nonprofit that is supporting that for us. So you can do that as well. Um, now, again, it's not all about donations and money, just telling people about our film or sharing it. So one of the things that's new on our website as of recently is this host a screening link. So after Rescued Hearts is complete, we need people to help us get it into their communities. So if you're interested in that, we have some FAQs and then an online form that you can submit if you have a group of folks that you'd like to share Rescued Hearts with. So those are being collected over the next couple of months. You're, there's no time too soon to fill it out if you're interested in hosting a screening. Please let us know uh, via that form on our website. And then, Chrisanna already had this up, but you may or may not have noticed, we do have some Rescued Hearts merch. Um, this is a cool way for people to support our film and represent Rescued Hearts and create conversations in their community about what this film is about. Uh, additionally, we had the most wonderful human collaborate with us, Nika. Uh, you can see the design to the far left is Nika Draws Nature. Uh, give her a little follow on Instagram or Facebook, but she helped design one of those logos that you see there. And we are so grateful. She's an incredible brand you know, expert and designer. So we're so honored. Uh, but yeah, that store is on our website as well. Uh, at the top, I believe it says store or shop, one of those two. So thank you so much for everybody that has already helped us in some way. There is truly no way big or small, even if it's just sharing about the film with a friend or family member uh, or your community, that is plenty. So in relation to donations, I just want to share with you guys, um, creating a documentary is no, is no small feat and it's very expensive. So one of the things that the expenses are related to is music and music licensing. So uh, through our donations in the previous round, we were able to secure a composer and we were actually introduced then to her best friend who just happens to be an amazing singer and songwriter named Elena. She felt really inspired when uh, Brianna, our composer, told her about Rescued Hearts and she ended up out of inspiration, literally in 24 hours, writing the most beautiful song uh, for our film. And this was before we even knew about her. So I have to tell you that um, no one really has heard what you all are about to hear. So we're going to just give a little teaser of the song that has been created for Rescued Hearts. Chrisanna, do you want to cue it up? Now I take my pain and climb. Let's go for a ride. Shine into my night. I can feel the strength in every stride. I've been here many times. And I Just breathe. 
Can y'all feel that? <laughs> Seriously, um, if you yeah. hear that whole, we, we wanted to spare you a tear session, but if you hear that whole song, it is so moving and it's amazing because Elena just heard about our film, read a little bit about what we were doing and this song came to her. So it will, we plan to have it at the end of our film, but I just wanted to chime in and say um, this was made possible also thanks to the generous support that we've been receiving, that we were able to compensate her for this song so that we could use it in the film exclusively for the film. And it's so powerful. It's so moving. And I think it's amazing how not only film is some kind of a channel of like really beautiful energy, but so is music. And so to bring those two together, I, I just think it's going to be the most incredible way of ending our film. And I just had to, I had to share that. <laughs> yeah, it is so exciting. I can't tell you how many times, um, actually the first time I'll, I'll be a little bit vulnerable. Um, creating this film has been a lot in, in the most beautiful way. And so when we got the song sent to us for the very first time, Chrisanne and I stood in our kitchen and hugged and just kind of swayed back and forth, listening to that song and just bawled our eyes out. <laughs> I have to tell you, it was just one of the most precious uh, moments that we've had. And I'm so grateful to Elena and Brianna who created the music to support the incredible lyrics and singing of Elena. So I'm really excited uh, for the world to experience that with us. Okay, so just as a reminder then, please remember to uh, watch and share the sneak preview. Uh, we have a little slide for this, babe. If you want to, if you're not already following us on social media as well, we do tend to share some really fun behind the scenes and clips and teasers and, and stuff that we think people will enjoy. So uh, give us a follow on social media. And then most importantly, remember to connect to your heart, spread love to yourself and to others, if nothing else. So first I wanna say, Dana and I, I would, we're kind of like self-help healing junkies maybe. We've been on our own healing journeys for uh, quite some time. And our last film, Love Heals, was really focused on ancient healing modalities and kind of um, just this wisdom and uncovering like how powerful love is. And so it's amazing because I think Rescued Hearts is, is like an extension of that. And as we've learned so many different tools, something that was remarkable to us was to really discover this idea of heart coherence. And you know, we've we've spent seven days in a Joe Dispenza retreat. Like we've we've gone really deep in, in different practices, um, just because we're curious and we want to learn and we want to grow and we want to heal. What I think is amazing about heart coherence and what I continue to discover is that it's so simple, it's so easy, and um, you know, like what we're doing right now. HeartMath didn't ask us to do. Sheva didn't ask us to do. We actually reached out to them and said, "Hey, there's some kind of magic to." these tools that y'all are offering and we want to have it as part of our film. And we also want to make it available to people because what about people that maybe don't have access to horses or don't have access to this like wild form of nature? How can we facilitate this within ourselves? And also how can we anchor this energy within us that ends up being a force of healing, even for our animal companions? So um, that was kind of the spark around this and our time together. And the other thing I wanted to add is I actually shared this with my sister recently, like what Sheva's going to dive into. She's, she's going to explain, um, I'm sure, in a lot more detail, but the, just the simple steps that she guided us through in the sneak preview. Uh, it's something that Dana and I started doing every day. And then we began to tell our family about it. So my sister is like this stressed out mother of three and just really, you know, struggles some days. And so I told her, gosh, there's this, this technique that you can try. And just three minutes will last for like six hours. Maybe just try it, see how it helps. And she told me within a couple of weeks, she's like, I'm a different mother. I'm showing up differently as a partner. Like I'm the best version of myself. And even recently, uh, she knew that, you know, she watched the sneak preview and she was like, oh my God, I've been so stressed out lately. I forgot to do this breathing stuff every day. So I'm sharing that because I think there's just some magic to this that we're still learning and uncovering for ourselves. But um, I'm so grateful that Sheva said yes when we asked her to come. And she even is 
she, just because she's so generous in her heart, she was like, oh, I'd, I'd love to give your community something for free so that they can really dig in more into um, understanding this for themselves and implementing it into their lives. So we'll share more about that at the end of um, Sheva's time with us. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that. And then Dana, do you want to read? Do you want to give Sheva's official bio and then we'll transition directly in? Absolutely. We are so honored for Sheva to be here. So Sheva Carr is the founding CEO of the Fiera Foundation and Heart Ambassadors, a global network with common purpose to create measurable social benefit with the power and intelligence of the heart. The co-vice president of UN Peace Messenger Organization, Pathways to Peace, and the co-director of HeartMath Healthcare. So we are just honored to have you here tonight, Sheva. And so we're going to pass it off to you. And at the end, you know, we can um, share some resources. And we actually have a free gift for all of you tonight, which uh, Sheva worked out for us, for our community. So we're very excited for you to learn more about that as well. First of all, what an incredible honor to be on this tsunami wave surfing with these incredible filmmakers and all of you. I think, yeah, you feel it, right? There's and 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 to honor that while my bio is being read tonight, which strikes me as a bit ridiculous, we are a room full of expertise. We have many heart math trainers I see in this room. Welcome. So good to see you all again. Many heart math trainers who do equine guided experiences with heart math. Um, and all of you are experts in the journey of your own life. And this is one of the things I love about the power of the heart is that uh, the heart is really the guide in the room. And horses and other beings who are naturally led by their hearts remind humans of that sometimes. So I know there is eagerness, I saw it in the chat, to hear about some of this incredible science that HeartMath, where I have had the privilege to partner and work for the last 30 years, um, has developed that may help us understand more of what is this magic that happens in these moments of connection. But I want to just start by sharing one of my favorite quotes, because I think it's important, and Krishna and Dana have done a deep service to this in the cuts of the film I've seen so, so far, which is Monet, the famous Impressionist artist, said at one point, they pride themselves on being able to analyze and understand my work as if it were necessary to analyze or understand when it is only necessary to love. So we're about to look at an analysis and conceptual understanding of the science of what love and connection does in our physiology, in our brains. But how many of you are auto mechanics? Just for those on video, show of hands. Anybody here an auto mechanic? I see one or two. How many of you drive cars? A lot more. You don't need to know how it works to drive it and get somewhere. Love is everyone's birthright. And then it can be fun. I personally find it fun to unpack the understanding of it. And as a pretty depressed and heady kid whose life was also rescued at one point by a 21 hands high horse named Hotshot, um, it helped me a lot to have the science convince my head to go to my heart. But not everybody needs that. Some of you are already there and I just bow to that and honor that in everyone in this room. And so tonight is really about you and the film is about you. This is a film for your heart and something got you in this room. And so I'd like you to just ask yourself if you could walk away from here with anything at all that you wanted, what would it be? Just to check in with yourself. If 25 minutes from now, 
you left here satisfied. What is it you hope to receive from being here? And if you got it, how would you feel? How would those you love of all shapes and sizes and number of legs feel? And maybe if you're willing, you could put those feelings in the chat. Deep connection, says Charlotte. Deep connection, courage. And the word core, by the way, from which courage comes, means heart in French. Peace and inspiration, more peace. I want to honor this uh, energy of deep connection and trust, understanding, intuition, more peace. If you had to pick which one of these lines would look like the feelings you just put in the chat, understanding, support, validation, connection, community, confidence, calm, peace, Patience, inspiration, authenticity, more connection, ease, the blue, 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 blue. Everybody agree? Any hecklers? What you are looking at, and I gave it away, is a picture of heart rhythms. And this was really the piece of research that put HeartMath on the map that was published in 1995 in the American Journal of Cardiology. And I see Lisa Marie leaning in to her computer. I bet she's going to put the paper in the chat for us. She's on it. HeartMath discovered this inextricable scientific link between how we feel emotionally and our heart rhythm patterns. There's a reciprocal dynamic. When we feel feelings like the ones that you put in the chat, it creates a uniquely ordered rhythm or pattern in the heart's rhythm. So our, for, for our clinicians in the room, let's be clear, this is not an EKG that we're looking at. This is not an electrocardiogram. These are not heartbeats. If that were the case, we would be looking at AFib or VTAC. We don't want that. This is something different. This is something called heart rate variability. It's more like the space between the beats. Think of the rests in a song that determine the rhythm of the music, like that spectacular music that we heard at the beginning. Oh my God, I love that song. Every heart has a song, and when it's playing its song coherently, it produces a sine curve in the rhythm. And there's a significant amount of science in that that we're not going to cover in the next 12 minutes. Because you don't need to know how it works in order to work it to your benefit and the benefit of all living things. But what HeartMath discovered is that when we change our heart rhythms, it changes how we feel. And when we change how we feel, it changes our heart rhythms. And we can do that on purpose in something called self-regulation. And we can co-regulate with other beings around us who are producing that coherent rhythm, especially if it's a louder signal than ours. It turns out that beings with bigger hearts, when they're coherent, have a bigger field of influence like horses. And we can co-regulate and heal in their presence. We can also have a regulatory presence on them, as anyone here in many faces I see here do work with abused animals, and we can help them here by regulating our own heart rhythms. Now, when we do that, over 1,400 things change inside us, including what we're broadcasting beyond us. So it's not just Dana and Kursana that are broadcasting and live streaming content. Every living thing is live streaming their emotional consciousness content in every moment. And we'll look in a moment at how that 
impacts the field. But in essence, for simplicity's sake, when you look at these two heart rhythm patterns, they're like two different operating systems. Survival mode or thriving mode is how I sometimes like to call it. Thriving requires an upgrade to the system that we can download from the inner net of the heart or in the presence of other great hearts, human or otherwise. And so the technique that uh, Dana and Kersana referred to that's in the sneak peek is heart mass quick coherence technique. And when I'm finished, we'll put a link in the chat to a one pager you can print out. We encourage all of you to share quick coherence far and wide. It's open source. You don't need to be a heart math certified professional to teach quick coherence. It has three steps and the steps are simple. The first step is to focus attention on the area around the heart, the chest area. If you find it helpful, just in the beginning, you can put a hand there, but this is a tool that can be done eyes open, eyes closed. So it's adopted in very diverse environments. And while you're maintaining your focus of attention in the area around the heart, the chest area, imagine the breath is flowing in through the heart and out through the heart, breathing a little slower, a little deeper than usual. That's called heart-focused breathing. If you find it supportive, you can count as you breathe in and count the same number of counts as you breathe out. That begins to balance the autonomic nervous system, which starts changing our operating mode from surviving to thriving. So breathing in through the heart and out through the heart. You could quietly notice as you do that heart-focused breathing if there are any changes in your body, emotions or thought process. Right away, my postural muscles relaxed. I didn't even realize I was tense. That's a mode shift. In step two, as you continue to breathe in through the heart and out through the heart, we invite you to make a sincere attempt to experience a regenerative feeling, such as appreciation or care for someone or something in your life. You might breathe gratitude for a moment of deep connection you've had with another person or a four-legged friend. Or you might breathe appreciation for a moment in the sneak preview that you watched for the 75% of you that did, that touched your heart in some way. And breathe that feeling in through the heart and out through the heart. As you do that, do you feel right now in this moment more like that top line, the crazy incoherent red line, or the blue line? I'm seeing lots of down hand signals. And some fireworks coming from Becca. <laughs> Good job, square peg. <laughs> if you didn't feel a shift right away, that's no big deal. Each time you do that, you're laying new cable, neurological cable toward a different type of operating system. 
But for those who did feel a shift, you just self-regulated over 1,400 things in your neurophysiology from those two simple steps, including changing how the brain works. And so I'm curious to ask you, how many of you feel like that blue coherent heart rhythm all the time? Well, right there, you didn't see any hands go up. We got Christina going, but I know Christina and I've seen moments where she's not like that. So no one is coherent all the time. We're not actually even meant to be coherent all the time. The nature of a healthy system is to oscillate. But now what I'd like you to do because we really want you to leave here with some take-home value. So that as uh, Krishna so exquisitely articulated, you're able to find this power and intelligence. There is a brain, by the way, that was discovered in the heart. You're able to find this intelligence in any condition, any circumstance when you leave here, even when you're not near your horse, if you're lucky enough to have it because your heart is with you ever. So can everyone pick one thing in the last week that triggered you more like the red line that made you feel a little incoherent? I'm sure we have folks in the room who could loan you some things if you can't find one. Pick one thing, don't pick the hardest thing in your life because we're just, so, Jessica, lots of people are saying work. Work is getting a bad rap, health. Thank you, Joanne, for that vulnerability. Your infant volunteers canceling. I know that one. So just notice what happens in your body, your emotions, and your thoughts when you think about that stressor. Do you tell yourself a narrative about it? Do you have some voices in your head telling you stories about it? And that one of the things we love about coming into the presence of a horse is uh, they're not telling a story about our problems mentally. So we're just going to do the same technique. But this time we're going to access the benefits to how we think and perceive and relate with life. So pick a word or a phrase, if you would, that summarizes your stress reaction to this stressor and put it in the chat. Just put the word in the chat. So we've got some of your situations, concussions, money. Yeah, there we go, Elaine. Now this is how you feel about it. Well, Thank you, everyone, for your vulnerability. Mine is sad, defeated, overwhelmed. Now, teenagers is the trigger, but how are your teenagers making you feel? That's the question. Because you can't change necessarily teenagers. But it turns out we have a lot of potency to take charge of how we feel, perceive, and respond with the power of the heart. So now we're going to refocus our attention on the area around the heart, the chest area. Imagining the breath is flowing in through the heart and out through the heart. Breathing a little slower, a little deeper than usual. If you find it helpful, again, you can count as you breathe in and count as you breathe out, inviting the inhale and the exhale to be even in length. And with that heart-focused breathing, come back to that feeling of deep connection and appreciation 
care for someone or something and breathe that in through the heart. And out through the heart. From this more coherent place, ask your heart for guidance. That idea, follow your heart, has scientific merit. There's an intelligence in there. How does your heart perceive or want to respond to this stressor in a way that would reduce your stress? Just listen for the first thing that comes to you and write it down. If you don't hear anything, no worries. My phone's been ringing. I'm not picking up. I'm here with y'all. Leave a voicemail for your heart. It'll call you back later. But if you did hear something or you notice that you feel different right now, yeah, some of you are already putting it in the chat. Let go. Deep love. I went from sadness to hope. What is the quality of the guidance from your heart? Soften, patience, harmony. And the others, it will all be okay. Gratitude, connection, joy. You see how that's a different operating system. Raise your hand for those who work with horses. If some of those feelings coming in the chat are the experiences people have with horses. They're having a heart experience. Now I am two minutes over my time, but I'm gonna ask Krishna, who told me to go with the spirit if I can have three more minutes. Oh, take as much time as you like, please. You are so generous because we can see that heart connection with the horses. Everything electrical in nature, and the heart is the largest electrical oscillator in the body, broadcasts an electromagnetic field. In the uh, average human being, that electromagnetic field is measured three feet beyond the body by something called an electromagnetometer that most hospitals have and has actually been around for over a hundred years. So this isn't like woo-woo stuff, it's real. And like I said, we are broadcasters. We are all live streaming channels, broadcasting content into that field all the time. Nonverbal beings, this is their primary mode of communication is through the field. And so we are inside each other's heart fields and that transcends species. So you're about to see the heart rhythms of a boy and his dog, but then we'll look at it briefly between a horse and her rider, and then between two humans, two hearts that beat as one is not just a poetic song lyric. It is something with scientific merit. So without going into all the details of this experiment, what you can see is, first of all, Mabel was never allowed in our laboratory. So this is very exciting for her to get to run around the lab. She's all beside herself. Her heart rate is going up to 240 beats per minute because this is like better than chasing the barn cat. And Josh, her boy, was instructed to be sitting in the lab, but not touch her. No physical contact. He just sent her love. Doing exactly what we just did, breathing through the heart. What happened to their heart rhythms when Josh was sending Mabel love? You see how they synchronize? That's at a distance. Then when Josh left the room, Mabel jumped on the door, scratching at it for Josh to come back and her heart jacked back up. And we have this with Ellen and Tonopah. You see when Ellen is breathing love to Tonopah through the heart, how their heart rhythm synchronize. And what you're seeing here is that a horse's heart rate 
first of all, is much slower than humans, which is interesting. And there's a lot to talk about there scientifically. And the variability is more. And in the presence of that, a lot of healing can happen for humans. So this is a reciprocal relationship of love. And I don't need to tell anyone who's around four-legged about that. You know it from your feeling. But here's where we're going to close up and start passing the baton back to Dana and Krishana is that these fields are interacting not just between living things, but also while some people believe Gaia, the earth is a living thing unto herself, but between um, planetary fields, intergalactic energies as well. So the earth itself also has an electromagnetic field. And in fact, the electromagnetic field of the hearts of living things resonates in similar frequencies as the Earth's field. And we have some leading edge research going on right now about how those fields interact and talk to each other and communicate. In fact, the heart itself, now we know, has cells within it that have antenna that are picking up the Earth's field and gathering information from that. Now, the first indication that came that there's some dialogue between the Earth's field and the human heart field happened on September 11th, 2001. And a NASA scientist, Elizabeth Rauscher, was actually measuring the Earth's geomagnetic field prior to and after September 11th. And does that look like some of those heart rhythms we were just looking at before? That's not, that's the Earth's field. You can see it's fairly coherent right up till just before, and that's a whole other conversation, the presentience of the heart, intuition. Some of you put that in the chat. Well, we now know through electrophysiology studies that the heart is the source of intuition, where that intuitive insight initiates and then communicates to the brain and the body. Um, so presentiently, the collective Earth's fields became incoherent just before 9 a.m. Eastern time on 9-11 when the trade towers were brought down in that horrific terror attack and remained incoherent for many weeks afterward. And the only thing that NASA's scientist Elizabeth Rusher could attribute that to, because there'd been bigger explosions nuclear testing, all kinds of things that did not affect the ionosphere and the geomagnetic field that way. The only thing they could attribute it to was the collective human emotional reaction. So our emotions, our broadcast, our live stream is impacting far beyond us. But if that's too much to digest, why is the film called Rescued Heart? Some of you may know this picture. This is a true story of twin girls who were born three months premature. The younger twin has the yellow dot on her diaper. She was failing to thrive. They were in separate incubators. That was hospital policy 20 plus years ago. Her heart rate was irregular. Her temperature was below normal. And the nurse on call that night put them in the same incubator together so she could snap a Polaroid so the older twin would have a memento of her sister after she died. No medical interventions were working. They assumed the younger twin was about to pass away until this happened. This picture, as you can see from the Worcester Telegram and Gazette in Massachusetts, was captioned by the Associated Press, The Rescuing Hug. Within moments of wrapping her arm around her twin sister, the younger twin's heart rate synchronized with her sister. Her temperature rose to normal. They co-regulated, and the twins became such a viral sensation that their parents moved them to another state so they could have a normal upbringing. They're in their 20s now. A three-month premature baby accessed the power of her rescuing heart. If she can, we can. 
So let's all take a moment to focus attention in that powerful pulsing intelligence in the center of us all. Imagine the breath is flowing in through the heart and out through the heart. And offer your live stream broadcast of love and care to that which matters to you. Then you are not just the rescued heart, but the rescuing heart. And we can radiate that gratitude to Kursana and Dana for bringing us all together and inspiring us with this incredible film. And I'm going to pass it back to them. Wow, Sheva. Go ahead, Kursana. I see you wanting to share. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was remarkable. I am a twin myself. So I feel a lot of emotion um, around that story. I don't, I don't know that I've ever heard it. And my parents actually have photos of my sister and I when we were infants and we wouldn't sleep. Like they tried to put us in different cribs and we would always crawl into the other's crib so that we could hold each other as we slept. Um, yeah. So I'm very, moved. <laughs> I'm very, very moved by all of this. Thank you, Sheva. Wow. I just feel so much. I, you know, it actually made me so grateful for this time because I think we filmed with you almost three hours. It was the longest interview that we did. I hate that term, but the chat that we did on camera. And um, I thought there's so much here. There's so much wisdom. There's so much insight. There's so much data. Even Ann Baldwin, Dr. Ann Baldwin, I see is on this call. Thank you so much, Ann, for the work you're doing and have done. Um, Dr. Ellen Gerke, who Sheva highlighted briefly. Uh, I mean, these two were like the trailblazers of this work and we filmed with them and we filmed amazing content and there was so much. So I'm so grateful that we just had this time together because I know we're still scratching the surface. And yet uh, I appreciate that I was able to go deep and we all were able to go deeper together because there's only so much we can include, uh, you know, in these short segments and even that will be included in the film. But I think what we're trying to do is get the essence of it and then create resources for those who want to dig in and really understand more deeply. So, um, I know Speaking Sheva, of resources. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> there were a few, a few questions that came in. If anyone has any thoughts or even comments that you'd like to share in the chat, we'll be reviewing that. But Sheva is offering a course uh, for our community exclusively so that if you want to dig deeper into some of this, I think that would be a great place to start. And we are giving this way to you. It's really important to know that. And if you have resources, what we're asking is that you donate to the film mm -hmm. in exchange for receiving the course. The value of the course is $100. But um, of course, the heart ha has no price tag. You know, this is it's your free resource and we want you to have access to it. And so um, this is a way for you to take some of the tools in the science we just talked about deeper and to practice the skills in a global community. We meet every day and practice these skills and offer ourselves as a rescuing heart for the world every day, sending love to planetary issues and people in need. So if, you, if you'd like to jump in and be a part of that, one thing is for sure, our community is always going to know what's happening with Dana and Kursana on the leading edge of the film. Um, so it's another way to keep uh, keep an eye out on them. Um, but, but really, we just wanted you to walk away with a gift tonight to access more of your heart, to have that connection. Oh, thank you, Sheva. We truly could not be more grateful, not only for the beautiful practice that you just took us through, in addition to all of the information that I think we love the balance, right, of being able to understand and see something and and have it analytically, but then taking us into our hearts and just showing us how to how to rescue our own. That was the whole thing with the film is Rescued Hearts has so many different uh, meanings, but the truth is being around animals and in nature and all of these things are so healing to the human spirit. But we have this incredible heart that lives within us that can help us 
at any point in time when we are willing to slow down and just connect with it in that way. So thank you for giving that gift to us. And this course is, is truly uh, such a gift to our community as well. So thank you for that. And I we're... just want to add, someone mentioned in the chat, Sheva, your voice is so calming and peaceful. I could listen to it all day. And I couldn't agree more. I love listening to you talk. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. But I, I think it's worth saying that, that that if you had met me 30 years ago, you wouldn't say that. And what that means is that peace was something I learned how to access. I was not a naturally peaceful person. I came into this world with a lot of intergenerational trauma. And my best friend was murdered in gun violence when I was seven, and it went south from there. And I have experienced tremendous trauma in my life. And if you heard my voice 30 years ago, you would have been agitated by my presence. Many people were. Mm. And so I'm sharing that with you to say, if there, if you're co-regulating with me now, it was because my heart was rescued by this material and became a rescuing heart. And yours can too. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's so powerful. Um, I'm curious, we had two questions come through. And so I just wanted to ask, I think the course is probably going to be the place where people really maybe get the meat of this. But someone asked if you would be sharing these slides or PDFs, like if any of this could be made available, would you say that all this information is in the course? Or what do you think about that? Um, okay, what a great question. Well, uh... I, I'm I'm looking at my co-director of HeartMath Healthcare because the slides are HeartMath Intellectual Property. Ah, got it. So got it. Um, for sharing slides like these, you actually do need to become a, a certified HeartMath trainer. And if anyone's interested in becoming a HeartMath certified trainer, that is a very doable thing. Like I said, we have some incredible trainers in the room. Just quick shout out to Christina Mars, who works with horses and heart math, Kansas Carradine, uh, Melinda Dewey. I saw Margaret Heath here, um, Becca from uh, Square Peg, Janet Fitch from Kaiser Permanente. There's a lot of heart math trainers in the room. So you can become a heart math trainer. And if you're interested in that, Aaron Robinson is here. Oh, awesome. I didn't see Aaron. Um, then you can write to us for information about that at de-stress at heartmath.com. And I'm putting that in the chat. And that would give you access to the kinds of PowerPoint slides that I was using to present this content. But what we will do that I promised you we would is we will put in the chat um, a one pager on the quick coherence technique and this behind it that you can print out and share with anyone. Okay. Uh, second uh, question was just around if there's any links to the papers and studies that were cited in your presentation. Thank you for that question. Beth. Yes. So um, the easiest way to gain access to all the citations, and I will say, uh, here's the quick coherence sheet in the chat. Um, Heart Math has published over 300 peer-reviewed papers on a vast, diverse array of topics interfacing with heart rate variability. And there are over 2,000 papers published by partners using partners like Harvard, Duke, Mayo Clinic, Brigham and Women's using heart math interventions. Um, in their third-party peer-reviewed studies. You can find all of them if you go to heartmath.org under our science library. And I will have that link for you directly to the science library momentarily. But I just so appreciate your heart and your dedication to what you're doing in this world. And it's truly inspiring for us because I think I recently was was told about this idea of our genius and i am so excited i'm so passionate about it now because i think all of us have something that is like our spark and so to see you and your genius and really guiding us in this way 
thank you for embodying it. And um, similarly to co-regulation, thank you for being that energy that continues to inspire all of us to say, what is the thing that I, you know, the, the, the energy that I want to be about in this planet and thinking about the chaos that's happening in this planet, man, just this moment together. I'm like, we probably did a little blip on the, the frequency of the world. Uh, how cool, how fun. And then to well, think about the global coherence initiative that y'all are doing and go ahead, please. I'm just going to say, speaking of that, the U S presidential debate has started while we're sitting here. Uh -huh. And I wonder if we might all, as a community coming together in heart beyond polarities that divide and separate from love, we might add some love to that election, election process that affects the whole world, really, with its impact. We just all breathe for a moment and send love and what is highest best of the debate and all the things happening around it. And I love that you talked about the spark, Krishna, in heart math language and the, the Harry Potter version of heart math that doesn't always make public view. We talk about that spark in each human heart as what's called the heart's blueprint. The heart is the first organ to form in the fetus. So as it's initiating its first heartbeat, which happens before the brain is formed, by the way, the brain and fetal development grows up out of the heart and carries some heart cells with it. That's one of my favorite pieces of science. You do have heart cells in your brain, not just brain cells in your heart. But as the heart is forming, I like to think of it as the seed of who we are. And it, it does contain information about your unique genius and purpose in this world. And so for those of you that decide to take that class, the tagline of it is um, find your heart's purpose, create a heart-based world. And that is the awakening of that seed of intelligence in you. Okay. Well, someone, uh, oh, first, Kathy, I'd like to address, uh, we will not be showing the sneak preview tonight. We did a poll at the beginning and most of the people on this call have seen it. We were going to show some clips, but I think our time was better spent in this space together. So please, please, please watch it, rescuedheartsfilm.com. Um, and then Rose asked, how do you manage stress and anxiety from trauma through these techniques? Hmm. So that is a massive question for which I have been wanting to write a book for the last three years. And I see Lisa Marie over there in the corner laughing. She's been madly transcribing uh, thousands of hours. She can she can sympathize with you, her son, on the how do you edit things. Um, but it, to distill it very simply... The heart is the best news for trauma I've ever found. Because now to address this, we have to define trauma. And it should be noted that our definition of trauma as a human family has been radically evolving at a very rapid rate over the last hundred years. Just to give you like a, a high speed tour in World War I, when people had trauma, which it wasn't called trauma then, it was called shell shock or combat neurosis. Um, the solution given was to shoot them because they were perceived to be a liability to the war effort. Thankfully, we have evolved past that. But if you have trauma and you've ever felt like broken goods, you know that that is part of our legacy inheritance that we don't have to live by. Trauma doesn't break us, it can make us, in fact. Um, and heart math science to me was the key in the door opening that prison and setting me free because technically the definition of trauma 
if you look in our DSMV codes, which is how allopathic physicians diagnose disease, currently the definition of trauma in a simplified form is trauma is being exposed to a life-threatening event that overwhelms your system such that you cannot process or be with it in the moment and you essentially store it for later. And then it has symptom pictures that go with that. So now you're perceiving current life events through that past event in what are called flashbacks. And you have avoidance behaviors or attraction behaviors based on the survival mode physiology of being drawn to or of having an aversion to that which threatened you. That's how trauma is defined neuromedically right now. But to me, that's a very limited scope of what trauma is. You don't, to, to have a traumatized nervous system, you certainly, in my opinion, now I'm Sheva talking, not the DSM-5, you do not have to have an exposure to a life-threatening event. Trauma, to me, is an operating mode. So in our current traditional definition or uh, sort of uh, run-of-the-mill definition of trauma, how the world relates to trauma is that it happens in linear time. There's an event that upsets me that I can't handle, that overwhelms my system, and now I'm broken for the rest of my life. And I have to try to navigate and mitigate being broken. I don't see trauma that way at all, thanks to heart math neuroscience. Trauma is an operating system in the physiology that initiates with an incoherent heart rhythm pattern and leads the physiology to be focused in the past rather than the present and the future. But that's an operating system anyone can get caught in. You don't need a past traumatic life event for that. Most people that I meet are operating in trauma mode, and that modal shift is simple with the power of the heart. When the heart gets coherent and when it learns and we have skills for learning to stabilize in coherence so that that becomes your default mode. When the heart is coherent over a stable period of time, then thriving is a totally different mode of operating with a different part of the brain perceiving your life and responding to it. And that mode shift is possible for anyone to make. I have yet to meet a single living thing that can't make that mode shift. It takes all of us varying degrees of time to stabilize in that mode shift, but it's your birthright to live from love. And so uh, then when people backslide, and feel like, oh, see, I really am broken goods. No, you're not. You just started running, I don't know, DOS 2.0 instead of DOS 3.0 again. So let's get, let's load DOS 3.0 back in. It's an operating system. So I hope that helped. This is, I'm giving you the Shev Shevized opinion about, about what trauma is, but I, I've been thinking about writing a book about it quite seriously, just to give us a different, a different option for how to look at it and be with it. So there's hope. And I don't know who asked that question, but I'd love to know if that gave you the answer you were seeking. Yeah, feel free to chime in. That was so powerful. Uh, I love this idea that we're not broken. I felt most of my life that I was until recently. So I can really resonate with that. And uh, one thing I found really beautiful as you're sharing, uh, Kitty chimed in that her dog loves what you're saying and moved on top of her and is snuggling. And she doesn't do typically do this. And so, so it's amazing. 
<laughs> we hear a lot on our morning heart start calls, which if you take the shift to the heart course, we're gifting you. You can come to these daily calls where the global community is sending heart to the world. And we are almost always joined by animals of all shapes and sizes. In fact, Aaron's horses have attended those calls. Um, certainly my cats get in on it every morning. They, 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 they're communicating in the field. They feel what we're doing and they're happy to be a part of it. Well, I will say we were staying at this place in the woods not that long ago and I was doing heart coherence at night, uh, just for a couple minutes. And then I felt, I didn't open my eyes. I could feel a being close by and I turned my head and opened my eyes slowly. And there was the cutest little mouse looking right at me with probably five feet from me, not moving a muscle. And I looked at it and it looked at me and then it scurried off. And I, and you had mentioned this when we were filming together and I was like, oh my God, that's so weird. Like it just, we had this incredible moment together. <laughs> um, okay. I know that uh, we could talk about this part all day, but I do want to make sure someone was asking, and I'm not sure it, whether you know this, Sheva, or maybe someone on the call might know, um, is there some kind of a group for fellow equine-assisted professionals integrating heart, heart math into what they're doing? Is there like some yes, kind of a place is. to I'm find them? <laughs> Aaron's voice and Christina's voice. Oh, and they're all answering. They got it. Oh, okay. They're pouring, they're pouring into her, so we're good. <laughs> Ah, oh, I miss that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's good. She's got a contact for it now. Okay. And then uh, someone else, David, was curious about how working with horses and the heart math tools, so maybe, you know, however you want to sh speak to this, um, can even help those diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's, especially if they struggle to comprehend the tools. I'm wondering if we have Kansas here still. If Kansas is here, I'd love for her to yeah. share she's working with an amazing organization. Can you unmute Kansas called Connected yes. Horse? You just put their uh, info in the chat. Connectedhorse.org. That's exactly what they're doing. I did actually. Yes, I just put that in the chat. Um, and, you know, one of the things that's really beautiful is that it's not necessary to have an intellectual um, academic background to go to the heart. And we can certainly see how when we are in the presence of animals, there's a nonlinear, non-intellectual connection that occurs naturally and organically. And so when the facilitators have some training, then perhaps that they offer that to their caregivers, which is what is happening with the Connected Horse Program, which operates out of the Bay Area, that already creates a, a social coherence, like you spoke to, Sheva. And all of that infuses into the space and creates some really powerful, incredible stories, such as um, individuals who've had aphrasia begin to speak in full sentences, not unlike the story that you shared at the beginning, Chrisana. But these might be elders who are in their ten, uh, 80th year and have been completely nonverbal and their loved ones and caregivers haven't heard them speak. And then in the presence of the horses, they will begin actually to speak in full sentences. And it's been lasting beyond those workshops. So that is um, actually a body of work that I believe we'll be learning a lot of wonderful information from in the coming years. So some of the heart math research that was just published in the last six months also indicates that practicing cardiac coherence over longer periods of time reduces all of the known risk factors for Alzheimer's, dementia, and degenerative cognitive disease. And um, to Kansas' point, one of the things that uh, we're, we know now about cognitive decline and um, all neurological dis diseases um, especially central nervous system diseases, is that when you bypass the verbal communication centers of the brain with other languages, like this field connection, or also music, and I'm putting a, another resource in the chat, musicmendingmensminds.org. Uh, um, music also synchronizes all brain function, but bypasses the parts of the brain that are impacted by Alzheimer's and dementia. 
and also Parkinson's. And so they're finding now that if they can get people with these neurodegenerative diseases making music, interacting with horses, also that bipedal action of sitting on a horse while it's walking, um, stimulating the autonomic nervous system, um, all of these things are extremely helpful for uh, slowing and in some cases even reversing these degenerative diseases. Um, so it's very much a leading edge of where the science is right now and also a leading need. I was in a meeting on Friday with our California State Assembly because of heart mass efficacy for things like Alzheimer's and um, other neurodegenerative disease. Uh, so I was present in this meeting to find out that one in one in four Californians by the year 2030 will be over the age of 60. And over 10% of people over the age of 60 worldwide have Alzheimer's or dementia. Just 10% 10, 10 of people over the age of 60. So the population is about to have a, an epidemic proportion of these neurodegenerative diseases and there's huge public health interest in things like equine interventions and music as ways to innovate new solutions. Well, I just wanted, before we let Kansas go, I just wanted to thank you, Kansas, for being here. We've heard so many beautiful things about you and the work you're doing. And so this is a fun way to meet, I guess. <laughs> um, but I just appreciate you being a part of this community call and chiming in and, you know, uh, and um, I, I feel your heart. So I'm sure it's only a matter of time before we meet in person. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Obviously we've been in similar orbits for so much for some time. So I'm looking forward to it. And it's always a joy to connect in the heart and share this because heart mass also saved my life um, that I've discovered it with and through Sheva about 20 years ago. And then I've been in the professional horse industry for 30 years. So combining those two together and really seeing how it's spiraling out, it's time now for this research and understanding and languaging to really meet um, meet everyone because it's very, very useful. And as you said at the beginning, the tools are just so simple. Thank you for that. It's so beautiful to hear part of your journey as well. And uh, wow, this is incredible. I have loved our time together. <laughs> I'm just, my heart is so full. Um, what I did was I created, now that we're all in our heart space, there was a video you may have seen in the beginning that was a bit of a countdown, and I thought it would just be a nice way for us to close. So I'm going to start this video, and for any of you who want to just sit in your heart for a minute and feel, you know, the energy of nature and horses and all of us, um, feel free, and if you are wanting to head out, we just... We're just sending you so much love and gratitude. There was actually some donations that came in while we've been having this time together. And we truly, truly, truly cannot thank you enough um, because all of it is making this film possible. And it's amazing to me because I feel like we're in the time of community right now. And I feel it on these calls. Like it's about us doing this together. So Dana wouldn't be able to do this on her own. I wouldn't be able to do this on my own. Um, but together we're, we're able to, to really, I think, create something that is going to help a lot of people. Uh, I will go ahead and start this little video and we're just, you know, we just send you off with love. That's it. Mm -hmm.